If you're into open world adventures, then Outcast 2 A New Beginning was perhaps on your radar. A demo's been out for a few weeks and I found a lot of technical issues with the demo. The controls were wonky and really unplayable at times. The camera had micro stuttering and then of course there were frame rate issues. Now that the final game's out, have those issues been addressed? Well, some things got better while some things are actually worse. For one, the controls did get better aiming and shooting feels a lot more natural controlling the jetpack and getting around also feels better the game's actually playable when it comes to the controls now the micro stuttering with the camera also seems to be reduced and almost non-existent the final game does run a lot smoother the frame rate's also better as you can see from this side by side comparison on xbox series x you get a solid 60 fps but only in some rare cases there's the issue with the final game and that's screen tearing. There's a lot of screen tearing and I'll show some details of that a bit later. Now let's get into the details of how Outcast runs on Xbox Series S versus Series X versus PlayStation 5. The game's 31.7 gigabytes on Xbox Series S and X and 30.9 gigabytes on PS5. Next up are loading times. Continuing the game from dashboard is faster on Xbox. It takes 41 seconds on Series X, 52 on Series Series S and 56 seconds on PS5. PS5 does have activity cards while Xbox gets the much more powerful quick resume feature. Quick resume gets you back in the game almost instantly. Let's not talk about the graphics, the resolution and the performance. In the demo there were no graphic mode selection in the menu. Series S was locked to 30 FPS while Series X and PS5 were targeting 60 FPS but never really got to 60. The final game does have two graphic modes in the menu quality and performance even the series s has a selection for performance mode in the menu however there is no 60 fps mode on the series s regardless of the option you choose in the menu quality or performance the series s is locked to 30 fps in fact the resolution and the graphics look identical on both modes regardless of what you choose i mean zooming in four times here the game looks the same regardless of the mode on the big brother series x and ps5 changing from quality to performance mode does bump up the target frame rate to 60 fps but even in series x and ps5 performance mode i really couldn't see a visual graphics difference between quality and performance you can see here the series x looks the same resolution in both modes series s runs the game at 1080p resolution maybe even lower at times and 30 fps series x runs at around 1080p as well but you can target 60 fps in performance mode the ps5 seems to be a bit sharp and can also target the 60 FPS. I mean, all of this, it's confusing. It just shows how big of a mess this game is from the technical standpoint and how poorly the game's been optimized for console. The mode selection between quality and performance doesn't really do what it's meant to on the Series X and PS5. And on the Series S, that mode selection doesn't do anything at all. Let's not talk about the performance, the frame rate. The game does have cutscenes and they're all locked to 30 FPS on all three consoles it doesn't matter if you have performance mode selected they're going to be 30 fps even on series x and ps5 the series s does struggle the most with these cutscenes and you can see a significant drops right here Series X and PS5 are better, but they too get the occasional drops. The game is 30 FPS on Series S even during the gameplay. And for the most part, it's actually pretty close to 30 FPS. There are still some drops into the high 20s and occasionally the game might get some freezing and lag spikes. The Series X and PS5 in quality mode are also locked to 30 FPS with frame rates being more stable than the Series S. But again, even the Series X and PS5 do get the occasional drops in quality mode. Let's now look at the 60 FPS performance mode which is only available on Series X and PS5. My analysis here of the frame rate is gonna seem a bit odd and you know when the game runs without screen tearing it's close to 60 FPS. On both consoles I've seen the frame rate locked to 60 FPS but only for small windows. There's just too much screen tearing that it throws this entire analysis in the gutter. The tearing here is really bad and pretty much constant and all over the place. I would say the PlayStation 5 has it worse than the Series X. 
Here I'm slowing down some footage on PS5 so you can easily see what screen tearing looks like. It's bad and even without slowing down the footage I was able to notice a lot of tearing while playing. And yeah, it is worse on PS5 compared to the Series X. When you look back at that early demo, the developers really tried getting more consistent 60 FPS in performance mode, but they introduced this ugly screen tearing. All of this just goes to show how poorly the games optimize on console. You have to keep in mind, Appeal Studios is a small team, so perhaps they just didn't have the resources to optimize the game on console. Maybe we'll see some future updates to improve stability and performance. Once you get past these performance issues and poor optimization, Outcast and New Beginning can actually be fun at times. I do have some nice things to say about it. For one, it's unique. It has its own character to it and feels different than anything else I've played before. The combat, the free roaming with the jetpack does get fun once you get used to the controls. The story's a bit corny, but I mean all the unlockables, especially the weapon upgrades you can do and all the little gadgets you can attach to your weapon, all of that did make me want to progress further and you know get some new abilities for the character and really upgrade all the abilities. Even still, there are some gameplay nuisances. For me, a big issue here was how the quests are tracked. It's just so confusing. There's too much unnecessary objectives when you're just forced to go through these dialogues with these NPCs. I mean, it's just redundant. The side quests and activities are also somewhat repetitive as well. And while the map can seem like, you know, big at first, it's actually not that big of a game. In terms of a rating, I would give this game a 7 out of 10. It can be fun if you enjoy open world third person shooters, but not really a must have. So that's what you need to know about Outcast 2, a new beginning on Xbox Series S versus Series X versus PlayStation 5. For the rest of the video, I have a little bit more gameplay of this on the three consoles. Wonderful, and just in time. The Gork erupts. 